Male ejaculation is a natural biological process that takes place through a coordinated series of events inside the body involving the brain, nerves, hormones, muscles, and reproductive organs. It is closely linked to sexual arousal and orgasm, but it has its own distinct internal steps. Understanding what happens during ejaculation can help make the entire process less mysterious and can also highlight why certain issues, such as difficulty ejaculating too soon, too late, or not at all occur. The process is complex but follows a clear sequence moving from the buildup of sexual stimulation to the release of semen through the urethra. The process begins in the brain. Sexual arousal starts when the brain interprets sensory signals, touch, sight, imagination, or emotional connection that activates specific regions responsible for sexual response. The hypothalamus, a part of the brain that regulates hormonal activity, plays an important role here. It sends signals down the spinal cord and through the nerves to the penis and the reproductive organs. At the same time, the brain releases chemicals such as dopamine, which increases pleasure and motivation, and oxytocin, which enhances bonding and emotional connection. As arousal increases, these chemical messages prepare the body for ejaculation by stimulating the nerves controlling blood flow and muscle coordination. As signals intensify, blood flow to the penis increases. Arteries widen while veins constrict, causing blood to fill the erectile tissue. This leads to erection, which is necessary for penetration but not strictly required for ejaculation itself. During this time, the testes, where sperm cells are made, are also preparing. Sperm production is continuous, but during arousal, the testes become more active, and the scrotum tightens to bring them closer to the body. This adjustment helps create the right temperature and position for efficient function. Sperm mature and are stored in a long, coiled tube called the epididymis, attached to each testicle. When sexual stimulation nears the point of no return, the body begins to move sperm from this storage area into a channel called the vas deferens, which is a muscular tube that acts like a conveyor belt. The movement is not sudden. It is created by rhythmic contractions that slowly push sperm upward toward the pelvic region. This marks the beginning of a phase known scientifically as emission, the first major stage of ejaculation. Although men cannot feel the exact movement of sperm through the vas deferens, they may notice a growing sense of internal tension or pressure that signals the body is preparing to release semen. As sperm travel upward, they meet the accessory glands that provide the fluid needed to form semen. The first stop is the seminal vesicles, a pair of small glands that contribute the majority of the semen's volume. Their fluid contains fructose, a type of sugar that gives sperm the energy they need to swim after ejaculation. It also contains substances that help sperm survive in the vagina, where the environment is naturally acidic. Next, the sperm travel past the prostate gland. The prostate adds a thinner, milky fluid that contains enzymes and minerals that further support sperm health and mobility. Finally, the bulbarethral glands, sometimes called Cowper's glands, release a small amount of clear pre-ejaculatory fluid. This fluid helps lubricate the urethra and neutralize any leftover urine residue, creating a more favorable pathway for sperm. All of these fluids mix together in the urethra to form semen. As the emission phase continues, the internal muscles at the base of the bladder tighten. This closure, involving the bladder neck, prevents semen from flowing backward into the bladder, a condition known as retrograde ejaculation. This muscular tightening also ensures that urine does not mix with the semen. At this point, the body is essentially preparing the reproductive plumbing so that all pathways lead outward. This internal coordination is crucial, and if the bladder neck does not close properly, men may experience fertility problems or notice little to no semen during orgasm. Once emission has fully prepared the semen in the urethra, the second phase begins expulsion. Expulsion is the part of ejaculation people are most aware of because it is accompanied by rhythmic pulses and pleasurable sensations. It occurs when muscles in the pelvic floor, especially the bulbospongiasis muscle, begin contracting in rapid, steady bursts. These contractions create pressure that pushes semen out through the urethral opening at the tip of the penis. Typically, these contractions happen about once every second during the peak of orgasm, then gradually slow down. The force of these muscular contractions determines how far or how strongly semen is expelled. 
Factors such as age, hydration, the strength of pelvic floor muscles, and the time elapsed since the last ejaculation can influence the intensity and volume. Orgasm and ejaculation often happen together, but they do not have to. Orgasm is the subjective feeling of climax, a neurological event in the brain, while ejaculation is the physical release of semen. In most cases they are synchronized, but some men may experience an orgasm without ejaculation, especially after certain medical procedures, during high levels of exhaustion, or due to specific health conditions or medications. The opposite situation, ejaculation without orgasm, is rare but possible. After ejaculation, the body enters what is known as a refractory period. During this time, the brain temporarily reduces the release of arousal-related chemicals and increases those that promote relaxation, such as prolactin, Blood flow to the penis decreases, the erection subsides, and the body begins resetting its systems. The length of the refractory period varies widely from person to person and can change with age, emotional state, overall health, and hormone levels. Younger men may be able to become aroused again quickly, while older men may need more time before another ejaculation is possible. Several factors can influence how smoothly the ejaculation process works. Nerve damage, for example, can interfere with the signals that coordinate the emission and expulsion phases. Conditions such as diabetes, spinal cord injuries, or pelvic surgeries can disrupt these pathways. Hormonal imbalances, especially low testosterone, can reduce arousal or limit the ability to reach ejaculation. Psychological factors like anxiety, stress, and performance pressure can interrupt the brain's ability to maintain the steady arousal needed for the process. Medications for high blood pressure, depression, or prostate conditions may also affect timing or intensity. Premature ejaculation, which involves ejaculating sooner than intended, is often due to heightened sensitivity or an imbalance in the body's arousal response pathways. Delayed ejaculation, where reaching climax takes unusually long or does not happen at all, may result from reduced nerve sensitivity, side effects of medications, or psychological blocks. Retrograde ejaculation, mentioned earlier, is when the bladder neck does not close properly and semen flows backward into the bladder instead of outward. While it is not harmful, it can impact fertility. Understanding the mechanics behind these conditions helps reduce stigma and encourages individuals to seek proper guidance when needed. Despite its complexity, the entire sequence of male ejaculation is an elegantly coordinated event. It begins with signals in the brain, progresses through hormonal and nerve activation, involves fluid contributions from multiple glands, and culminates in rhythmic muscular contractions that release semen. Each step supports the next, and the system works with remarkable precision. While variations are normal and changes can occur over a lifetime, the essential design remains the same, to allow the body to release sperm in a way that maximizes their ability to travel and survive. By breaking the process down into its individual parts, it becomes clear that ejaculation is not just a single moment, but a series of interconnected actions involving different organs and systems working together. This biological choreography ensures that the body can respond to sexual stimulation, prepare sperm for potential fertilization, and release them efficiently. Understanding how the process works makes it easier to recognize when something feels different or when challenges arise. It also reinforces that male ejaculation, like many aspects of human biology, is a natural and carefully coordinated function that reflects both the complexity and the adaptability of the human body.